everybody, my name is Nozimele Kamganamayaba. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, today I'm covering yet another topic. I'll be talking about HIV and contraceptives. I'll be zooming on my own journey and why currently I'm not on any kind of contraceptives. So this was influenced by a number of questions that I received from women that are living with HIV asking whether or not there are, you know, particular contraceptives that they should be avoiding. Maybe they have severe side effects for people living with HIV. HIV, it's going to affect us having children in the future or because now we're using ARVs and contraceptives um, will one drug um, you know influence how the other drug works will the ARVs influence how the contraceptives works or the contraceptives influencing how ARVs work when combined in your system so before I even start let me just say that um, the type of contraceptive that each person you know chooses to use will depend on a number of factors um, one, the lifestyle that you're living, okay? Um, do you plan on having children, you know, in the future? And how soon do you want to have children? Um, you know, the accessibility of that particular contraceptives. I know in the rural areas, because of limited resources, um, you know, the contraceptives that we get, um, you know, in town or in more urban areas differs because of the lack of resources. Um, also, the health conditions. In this particular case, you are someone living with HIV you are using a particular drug when these drugs once again are combined together in your system is the other one influencing how the other one works um, so depending on that you will choose the right contraceptive for you so before I even start I made a list um, of all um, available contraceptives in particular in South Africa and with the hope that you're going to identify depending on what you are using currently so the first one that I'm going to focus on is the implant so the implant is a small plastic rod um, um, similar size of a matchstick that is placed under the skin under your upper arm so it is a steady hormone which temporarily stops an egg from being released each month um, when the eggs are not being released you cannot get pregnant the implant also thickens the mucus in the cervix stopping the sperm from reaching the egg a single rod implant is used for three years um, and a two rod plant um, implant rather is used for five years meaning that you do not need to go to the clinic every other month um, for you to get an injection or get a prescription um, and stuff like that you can use it while you are breastfeeding it is highly highly effective it may cause light or no period um, um, pains or even periods which I know is a big plus for many ladies because that time of the month can be very hectic um, you can get pregnant immediately after the removal of the implant um, and you can use it while on ARVs it won't affect um, um, the effectiveness of your ARVs. So what are the, um, some of the cons, some of the things that you should be noting? It does not protect um, against sexual transmitted infections. So the next one that I wanted to cover is the IUD. The IUD is a tear-like device that is basically inserted inside the woman's uterus, inside the woman's um, um, womb. It comes in two options, there's a copper and the hormonal. The copper one repels the sperm and can also be used as an emergency contraceptive. Um, and then the hormonal, IUD um, releases a dose of hormone um, which temporarily um, stops the egg from being released every month. What are some of the pros? So the device can be removed at any time and it won't affect you having children in the future. Um, it can be used while you're on ARVs. Um, you, it can reduce your bleeding every month, which is a big plus once again for many ladies. And you can use it or it can prevent pregnancy for between 5 to 10 years. So it's really more long term. Um, some of the things that you should be aware of, it can increase um, your period pains and it may cause um, some headaches or some back um, um, pains, but once again, it varies from one person to the next. The most common one um, that we all know is the injection. And for as long as I can remember, growing up, ladies every month will go to the clinic to get an injection. The, the common one is called the depot, and the depot is given every three months. The injection contains a hormone which stops pregnancy by preventing ovulation and thickening the cervical mucus. What are some of the advantages? You don't need to take it every day. It reduces um, the risk of ovarian cancer. It can also be used while you're on ARVs. It won't have any kind of effect. 
Um, some of the cons that you should be aware of, it does not protect against um, sexual transmitted infections, as I've said earlier. You may have irregular um, cycles in terms of your period. Fertility may return a few weeks after you stop the injection. I've spoken to a number of ladies that have actually said it doesn't even take weeks, sometimes it may even take months. But once again, it differs from one person to the next. And the other one, why people do not like the injection, do not like the depot, is because they say, um, you know, um, they've gained weight from using the injection. Then there's the oral contraceptives in, in terms of the pills. Um, they come in a pack of 28 and you should take them every day at the same time. If you choose 7 p.m. It needs to be 7 p.m. Similar to ARVs. There are two main types. Um, there is combined oral contraceptives and then there's um, one combination in terms of a pill contraceptives. Um, they contain hormones to stop ovulation. Uh, and they thicken the cervical mucus. This prevents um, pregnancy as no egg is being released. Um, some of the pros, um, the pill can offer relief um, from cramps and lighten um, your periods. It can reduce acne. Some of the cons, um, it may increase your chances of having a stroke. Um, people have complained about weight gain and also headaches. And also it's this particular one that you should be aware of when you are using ARVs. In particular, ARVs that have an ingredient called efferizins. So here is a box of my ARVs. I hope you can see them. So my ARVs include three ingredients. It includes efferizins, it includes tifanavor, um, it also includes m tricytabine right so um doctors have said that in particular with ARVs that includes um uh, the ingredient efferizins um it all boils down to how the drugs work together when it comes to metabolism um it has been proven that um ARVs reduces the effectiveness um of the oral contraceptive um when combined if ARVs are affecting how the contraceptive the oral contraceptive is working um then it may be a problem where you might have a surprise um, when you're least expected, when you think you're covered um, because you're taking the pill each and every day um, at the exact same time, but then you still fall pregnant. So please um, just speak to your doctor. Ask them just in jail, if I'm taking the oral pills, if I'm taking, um, you know, the contraceptive pills, um, considering the fact that I am taking ARVs, um, in the ingredients of the ARVs, um, EF horizons, is it one of them? And is it going to affect the effectiveness of the contraceptive pills? And then the other option of contraceptives is the emergency pill, better known as the morning after pill. Um, it is used when you've had unprotected sex, um, you didn't use a condom, and and you didn't you were not on any kind of contraceptives um, so it is readily available over the counter um, to prevent you know pregnancy um, so some of the pros as, I, as I've said readily available at most pharmacies available at um, after our clinics 24 7 you do not need a prescription it is safe to use the emergency contraceptive pills as many times as you need you can also use it when you are on ARVs. Um, some of the cons, um, some of the disadvantages, you may experience some kind of nausea, headache, fatigue after using the pill. You may also have abdominal pain after using it. It does not protect you from future pregnancies. So it doesn't mean that after you've used it today um, and then next week or in two weeks to come, you have um, you know, um, another incident of unprotected sex and you think that the other one that you use is going to protect you from that. Um, it is not the case. And then there are condoms. Everyone knows what condoms are. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Um, there are male condoms, there are female condoms as well that are available. And then the last contraceptive that is available in South Africa, it's called um, the sterilization. Okay, it's available for men and women. For men, the small tubes that carry out sperm are cut or blocked, preventing the sperm from leaving the body. The procedure for women involves cutting, closing, or removing pieces of the fallopian tubes where the egg travels through during um, ovulation. Um, so some of the pros, it is short, 
simple procedure. It will not cause any changes to your periods. Um, some of the cons um, is that, well, it depends on who you speak to. To men, they can, call back, they can go back to the clinic and have all that procedure reversed. If they want to have children, they can now have children. For women in particular, it is very common when a woman has had um, children already um, and then they do not want to have children anymore, right? Or actually in this day and age, it may be a woman that does not want to have children at all. Um, so they go through this procedure. They cannot go back okay um and and um, reverse the whole process so that's why a lot of counseling is actually needed for you to do this now let's talk about my own journey i started contraceptives in 2012 that's when i had made the decision that i'm going to have sex with my boyfriend for the first time and my decision on which method i want to go with was not really influenced by anything in my mind i had two options it, it was either i was going with the injection or the pill and because I'm not a fan of injections, um, just in general, I thought the pill will be the most convenient for me. Now, if you've been following me for quite some time, you know the story. Um, I was in Germany and I made the decision that, um, you know, when I go, I come back to South Africa for holidays, I'm going to have sex with my boyfriend. We were in a long distance relationship. And my family was under the impression that I was going to come through for, um, for one week, but I knew that it was two weeks, but I was going to spend the other week with my boyfriend. And because of that, I knew I was not going to have time for me to arrive in South Africa, go consult a doctor, and then start my treatment. It was, it was, I needed to be confined to wherever he was staying. It just in case I bump into like a family member in town and they're like, uh, and then we thought you were coming in next week, right? So I thought to myself, let me do all my jazz and handle all my business and it, um, while I was still that side before I arrived back. So I went to the doctor. I'm not sure whether it was the excitement. -y. I think it is. Uh, it was the excitement, the fact that I was going to have sex for the first time. But also there was a level of like e language barrier between the doctor and I. I remember um, when the doctor gave me the pills, he said that I should take them for about three months, um, non-stop. Now, I'm not sure it was because of, um, like, I didn't understand him correctly, but I was taking them, like, every day, same time, like, there was nothing I was missing in between. But a week before I left Germany for South Africa, I started getting my period. And I was like, okay, this is weird because the doctor had said, I'm not going to have my period. And why am I having my period um, now, uh, most importantly, just when I'm going to be doing the deed? Um, because all of this now is messing up with my plans, okay? But again, I'm not someone who gives up very easily, okay? I, was on, I, was, I said to myself, you know what? I'm still going to go through with this, whether I come high, come low, okay? So I arrived in South Africa, didn't tell my boyfriend that I was on my period. I had sex while I was on my period. And I remember even after like everything happened, I was not sure whether I was bleeding from the fact that I had lost my virginity or actually from, from my period. He probably thought it was from like breaking my virginity. And so I continued with the contraceptives up until a point when I was diagnosed now with HIV. And the reason why I stopped was because the doctor had said, now you guys need to have protected sex and it be because before then we were not using a condom my only concern was that i did not want to fall pregnant and hence i was taking the pills now the doctor was like you are at risk of reinfecting each other um you're not on treatment and it so to continue being okay fairly okay you need to further protect yourself so i started now um initiating us using a condom i stopped my con um, contraceptive pills because i did not find like i did not see any use if you're gonna use a condom i shouldn't be worried because a condom is like fairly safe but then of course you know the story um he will insist on not using a condom sometimes and that's when i fell pregnant um, before that, I do not know, guys, how many um, like emergency pills, the morning after pills that I've taken during that time. Um, every time we will have sex, you know, unprotected sex, I'll go to the pharmacy. To some point, I feel like they stopped working because that's how 
that's how many I took during that, that point in time. Now, I know that someone uh, at home, I'm um, thinking to themselves, you could have gone back to contraceptive pills. And then, absolutely, you are 100% right. I was just being careless and, yeah, just ir irresponsible to, to say the least. Um, so, we broke up um, in 2014. And at that time, I was not on contraceptives. The only form of contraceptives I was in was using a condom. And sometimes I was not even using that. So we broke up and I would then meet my husband in 2016. So for a long time, Sku and I would use Ilanduga EE condoms. And then I started treatment in 2017. And subsequently to that, um, Usku, um, shortly after that, um, as time went by, he also started a PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis, used um, for um, um, people that are at high risk of being infected, used for people that are HIV negative, but are at high risk of being infected with HIV. In this case, very common for um, sex workers, but also for people that, like Sku and I, where one partner is HIV positive and the other partner is HIV negative. So in our relationships, those are the measures that we have put into place for pregnancy, making sure that um, we're using a condom, and then for HIV and not infecting the other person, I'm under, you know, ERIVs and my viral load is suppressed. He is under PrEP to make sure that he does not get infected. Although when I was speaking to um, a doctor friend of mine and I was, um, you know, explaining our situation, I was like, no, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, admirable that you're taking it a, a, a step further. Um, but Tina, as clinicians, the fact that your, um, you know, your, your, your viral load is suppressed and the virus is suppressed in your system, that is good enough to say by now school cannot get infected you wanna um in case where you decide now to to stop using a condom which it went to um into that decision so 2020 we decided okay no we're not gonna use a condom anymore and that was also influenced by the fact that um i wouldn't say actively actively trying we're kind of like oh okay let's see what happens you know what um if we should try and have a baby and then um try and have a child so we stopped using e condoms and um that's what that's what we've been doing to to this day now i don't want to get into um into the details of having a child and all of that jazz um because you know how sensitive i get when it comes to the issue for many reasons and then so please i i am really from the bottom of my heart Please don't ask questions, oh, have you tried this method? Why have you not fallen pregnant yet? And all of that jazz. I don't know, okay? All I know is that when I went to the gynae, he said everything is fine. And then, um, yeah, it will happen when it will happen. So that is a situation that we have chosen for ourselves. Now, coming back to the question of how um, ARV treatment um, can influence your contraceptive methods, um, wh whichever way you decide to use, shame, I cannot say because I've never, um, you know, uh, taken an implant. Um, I've never used an IUD. Um, I've never used a, con a contraceptive pills in this period where I've been taking ARVs. The only sort of um, preventative measure that I have used is a condom and a, co a condom is not hormonal. So in a nutshell, my ARV treatment has not affected my contraceptives and vice versa, my contraceptive pills, um, you know, or whatever method that I'm using has not affected my ARV treatment. If you are someone that is in that situation where you are using one or two of the methods that I, I, I spoke about earlier, the IUD, um, the implant, uh, the, the injection, the pills, um, while you're also using uh, or taking ARVs, I would definitely advise you to, to speak to a clinician, speak to the nurse and find out um, if that preventative measure when it comes to family planning, contraceptives um, will have some kind or, or will be influenced or will be affected by you taking ARVs. Guys, I hope this was informative. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time.